Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my field value substitution series where we're taking a list of known countries and their misspellings, and then we can apply them to any new misspellings that people type in and yeah, that kind of stuff. Go watch parts one and two if you want a better explanation for what we're doing, okay? Because I'm not going to go over it all again. Go watch those two videos, then come on back. All right, so we're all set on the table level and with our two queries, we got one query to fix known misspellings. We have another query to bring up misspellings as you know, ones we don't know about, right? And this is good, like I said, for, you know, for, for batch updates or if you import stuff or if you wanna check it once a month, but what about day to day? What about if you wanna make the users pick from a list here, but still give them the option to type in what they want. Well, that's where we can easily use a text-based combo box. It's a combo box filled with a list of items, but it's not bound to an ID field, it's just a text field. It's a little more rare as far as combo boxes go, as far as, as, far as the way I use them. I usually bind my combo boxes to ID fields, but again, I, I have to emphasize, this is for the situation where you don't wanna have a properly relational uh, a properly normalized relationship between you know two tables here. So we're just gonna make it a list that the user can still edit. So what I'm gonna do is delete this country text box. We're gonna put something better there. Actually, before we do that, let's make a single list using our known data. We have a list of known countries here, but I don't wanna have USA show up six times. So let's use an aggregate query to make a nice pretty list of just one of each of these known countries. If you don't know what an aggregate query is, go watch this video and then come on back. It's basically where you can take a big long list of stuff and break it down so they're all grouped, right? So you get one of each. All right, so we'll go to create query design and we're going to get rid of this thing and we're gonna bring in our country table and I'm gonna bring in my country T, not the misspelling, just country. Go to query design and set this to a totals or aggregate query and make sure this says group by. Now when I run it, I get a unique list of just the countries in there once each. Okay, and I'll save this as my country unique queue. All right, notice I'm starting all the country stuff with country because later on, if you want to find all your country stuff, just come over here and type in country and there's all your country stuff. See how easy that is? Right. Okay, so now this is a good list I can use to build that combo box with. So back into here, let's go to form design, come up here, find the combo box, drop it down, meow. We're going to look up the values from a table or query, the values that go in the box, right? Next, where are we gonna get that list of values from? Well, they're stored in the country table, but that country unique queue is gonna give us what we want, just one of each country. Okay, next, there's only one field in there, bring it over. Normally there'd be an ID in here, but we're not binding this to an ID. We just want the text, All right? Next, you wanna sort it? Yeah, sure, why not? You could sort it here or in the query, either one's fine, doesn't matter. Next, this is what it's gonna look like. Resize this if you want to. Notice there's no bound hidden column over there, that's fine. Next, what are you gonna do? We're gonna store that value as text in the country text field in the customer form. Next, what label would you want? Country is fine. And don't forget, name your combo box too. I wish the wizard did that. Access team, hint, hint. Open this guy up, go to all, find the name, and we're gonna call this my country combo. Country combo box, all right. And then I'm gonna use a little format painter and get that label color. Okay, slide that up. While we're at it, let's put it in the tab order where it belongs. Instead of country combo at the bottom, we're gonna put it after zip code and before notes. So when I tab off of it, it goes over here instead of the next record, right? That'd be another thing on my wish list for the access team. Right? When you put a control on the form, automatically stick it in the in the tab order where it goes. I know you really can't tell because the tab order could go across this way or down this way, but like I said, that's why it's on my wish list. <laughs> All right, save it, close it, open it. Oh, wrong one. Open it. 
Okay, now if I come in here, I can drop this down, pick a value, or I could type something in myself, like Starfleet. And it accepts it. It doesn't have to have an ID behind it. It's not bound anywhere. The actual data, the text that I type in, is still being stored in the country field, even though I can pick from a list of options. Right? It's a nice... It's, it's a nice option to have for combo boxes. I don't use this often. I really don't. It's rare that I do this, where I have a combo box based on just text and it stores text in the table. Usually it's based on an ID. So now the user can either pick from the list or type something in. If you don't like what they type in, you could still go through here. You could fix this. It'll fix any known misspellings. You can check for unknown ones. Oh, there's Starfleet. What do I do with that? Well, that's for you to decide. Add it to your table, yell at the user, fire them, fire them out of a cannon, whatever you want to do. Now, if you do want to force them to pick from the list, which totally defeats what we're doing here, you can set limit to list equals yes. If you come in here to go to the properties, go to data, there's limit to list. You can set that to yes, then you're forcing them to pick from your list, but that defeats what we just built. You want to still be able to allow them to type in a value, right? Now, what if... What if, if they type something weird in here like Starfleet, okay, you then have the, the box A check to see if it's a known country. If it does, you're good. B, check to see if it's a known misspelling. And if it's in that list, you're still good. Make the substitution at that point. And then C, if it's not in either of those lists, Ask the user if they're sure they want to add it. Say, hey, Starfleet isn't in the country table. Are you sure you want to add it? And if so, let them add it anyways. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do that? Well, you can. And we're going to do that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. And everybody gets some free training. So check it out. Click that blue join link below. But that is going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mention in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.